Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 18.3.1 to the public. iOS 18.3.1 is available around the world at the same time for everyone. And if you're not seeing the update, just go to your settings, go to general, then software update, and you should see the update. Even if you have beta updates enabled, it was showing up for me. So you should see it here and then be able to install it. Along with this, Apple also released many other updates, iPadOS 18.3.1, watchOS 11.3.1, along with macOS 15.3.1 and visionOS 2.3.1, as well as some older updates as well with iPadOS 17.7.5 and others. No updates yet for Apple TV or HomePod. Now this particular update came in at 654.3 megabytes on my iPhone 16 pro max was around 600 megabytes on all the devices, except the iPhone 11 was around 300 megabytes. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, then general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 22 D 72 and this particular update does not have a new modem update. So if you're installing from iOS 18.3 to version 18.3.1, the modem update version should change. For example, on the 16 pro max, it's 1.40.03. If you have a 16 pro max, you should have that version with 18.3.1 as well. And as far as new features, well, this is not a feature update, but rather a bug fix and security update. You can see that here where it says this update provides important bug fixes and security updates and is recommended for all users. Apple typically does this with a three point out update. So 18.3 would be features. 3.1 is security updates and bug fixes, and they haven't specified the bug fixes, but there are a few things to note. We'll also talk about security updates in a second, but it looks like they've fixed the micro stuttering. So I looked on older devices or non pro devices. So the 16 plus and the iPhone 11, if we go into music, swipe home, it looks like it's smooth this time around. So it's no micro stutters there. And I've been using it for the past hour or so. Although it looks like maybe we had one there. I've been using it for the past hour or so, and it definitely feels a little bit smoother and faster on the 16 plus where with iOS 18.3, it had some issues from time to time. Also, I noticed that notifications seem to be coming through for more apps. So maybe this was an issue for some before, but I'm seeing more notifications, even if the overall app is not set up properly. We still do not have the iPhone 15 wallpaper though, and it does seem that the touch bugs have been resolved as well. So I'm seeing that it's much more responsive this time around, just going into different apps, swiping through, maybe going back to podcasts. It's missing less touches and the apps are opening nice and fast, especially if they've been loaded already. Of course, they'll just go right in things like image playground, take a second, but you'll see that was nice and fast, no issues there whatsoever. And hopefully it fixes issues with CarPlay, maybe some other issues that people are having with signal where calls were dropping when they were placing calls so far, I haven't seen that, but I've only placed a couple calls so far on this phone. So, so far it seems a little bit better, but we'll have to give it a few days and check. And we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up video. As far as security updates, well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. And on Apple's security release website, if we scroll down, you'll see iOS 18.3.1, as well as iPadOS 17.7.5. And if we go into this, we have one specific, very urgent and important security update. So it's for accessibility and it's for all iOS 18 supported devices. It says a physical attack may disable USB restricted mode on a locked device. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited in an extremely sophisticated sophisticated attack against specific targeted individuals to fix it. You'll see it says an authorized issue was addressed with improved state management. And then we have the CVE number and who submitted the issue. So this is something that's updated and definitely worth installing. We'll talk about that in a moment though. There are no additional release notes in this update, but there were a couple other releases today as well. If we go into the app store, the first update we have today is for Apple support. You'll see it's version 5.7 with performance enhancements and bug fixes, but there was a bigger update for the sports app. So if we go to Apple's sports app, search for it here, give it a second to load, go to Apple sports. We now have version 2.5, which has added NASCAR as well as spring training for MLB or major league baseball. So if you utilize these, be sure to update it and I'll do that in a little bit. As far as performance so far, it seems pretty fast. I showed you that a little bit with some older devices here. So if we go into music, it's fast. If we go over to 
scrolling in the app library. It seems ProMotion is nice and smooth. Now the app animation or the scroll speed may not be what you'd like, but that's set by Apple. But overall, it seems to be nice and smooth so far. If maybe we go into the camera and open that, it goes in fairly quickly. Thankfully, I'm not seeing the black screen so far on the camera. Some people have experienced that. And in general, it seems to be performing as you would expect. Thermals have actually cooled down quite a bit since I first installed it. Initially, it was quite warm, but let's take a look. And on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, right after installing, we're just at about 30 degrees Celsius, 29.9, and it's going up and down, which is fairly cool for this device, especially after installing a new version. So that's great to see. Of course, we'll check that again on the weekend follow-up video. Now, as far as the battery life, well, this may improve it for some. However, many people said iOS 18.3 had great battery and fixed it for them. In my YouTube community polls, over 80% were saying that it was as good or better than the last version, but hopefully it fixes the additional people that were having issues. And on this device, which I've been using full time for a few days, you'll see my battery health is at 100% with seven cycles. On my other device, my Pro Max, you'll see here we have 123 cycles at 100% as well. If we take a look at the last 10 days or last six days on this device, yesterday I had three hours and three minutes of screen on time, four hours and 38 minutes of screen off time, and used about 60% of the battery or so. It's getting me through the day with no problem. However, I do expect it to be a little bit better on the Pro Max when I start using that again. And many people have sent me their battery and they're getting 10 hours of screen on time, no problem. So hopefully it improves that even more this time around. But again, we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.3.1, well, due to that security threat, absolutely. While it is fairly specific, it does patch that issue and does again seem to fix the micro stutters that many were having. So going in and out of apps, that seemed to be the biggest issue there where it would stutter for many people and it seems nice and smooth this time around. As far as iOS 18.4 beta one, well, we do expect it this week. And that's again, according to Mark German, he said to expect it sometime mid this week. So maybe tomorrow, maybe Wednesday or later this week as well. But either way, I would expect the first beta this week with some new features with Apple intelligence, along with maybe some additional features with default apps and more. We'll have to wait and see and possibly even some new emoji. As far as benchmarks, well, I ran it twice right after installing it. It was fairly poor, but then I ran it again and I have the best multi-core score I've ever seen. 3,527 for single core, 8,842 for multi-core. Compared to what we had before, it's much higher again than anything I've ever seen as far as the update goes. So this was the highest before on iOS 18.3. And if we go back here, you'll see that it's definitely the highest I've ever seen. So pretty great scores overall. We had good scores on 18.3 mostly overall, and that was the highest before. Now it's even better. But again, we'll take a look at all the devices in the weekend follow-up. As far as storage, some people did say they regained some storage, but if we go to general, iPhone storage, wait for it to load, we'll scroll to the bottom and you'll see under iOS, it seems to be about the same for me. 12.01 gigabytes for iOS, 6.25 gigabytes for Apple intelligence for a total of 18.26 gigabytes. As far as system data, well, this goes up and down as needed. So that could go up and down as it needs to use more cache data. So that's everything so far in iOS 18.3.1. If you've noticed any different bug fixes or changes, or maybe a new feature that many people didn't notice, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.